fight on the card from UFC 283. Really looking forward to this one. Matt's got the Raptors hoodie on right now. Oh, Lord. I'm the rookie and the vet. Matt, we have a couple of guys looking for their yeah. first UFC win. Simon Oliveira, the vet in this case. He took on Tony Gravely in his UFC debut, and he did not win that fight. He's taking on a fellow Dana White's Contender Series fighter in Daniel Marcos, the Peruvian champion from an organization called 300 Spartan. Never heard of it before. I got ready for his fight on Contender it's Series. It's so mid-2000s to call your MMA promotion that. And for Daniel Marcos, that was kind of the thing. He had taken almost a three-year layoff between being the 300 Spartan champion, Gerard Butler would be amped about that, to fighting on Contender Series. Looked really good in his fight against Brandon Lewis this past summer. And if you do break down these guys and their fight styles, they're interesting guys for the 135-pound division because... At what, 18 of 4 and 13 and 0, they're not really prospects. They're also 29 and 31. You're not really a prospect, but they have a big time opportunity to move forward in this bantamweight division. That's one of the most stacked divisions that they have oh, right now down. in the UFC. But I mean, if you do look at this overall, again, both guys were on contender series, both guys won decisions. But one guy won one a little bit more impressively than the other, albeit the, the level of competition kind of spoke to that. And for Daniel Marcos, he got the big time win over Brandon Lewis. He dropped him in that fight. Complete he was able to just completely and overall kind of own that one. And he was actually an underdog in the fight, but all three judges scored at 30-27. For Simon Oliveira, he beat the former Combate great Jose Alde. Beat him by split decision. It was kind of one of those ones where you were kind of left wanting more. And then he ends up in the UFC and he takes on a guy like Gravely and it kind of left you wanting more. And we said it kind of getting ready for Oliveira's UFC debut. This is a guy that fought with Pancrase, fought with Jungle Fights, fought all over the place. And what's his biggest thing? Well, he's billed as a Muay Thai fighter. And he is a Thai fighter, but he's kind of sloppy with his defenses. And he's great at jiu-jitsu, but not with takedowns, but he's really good at front chokes. And that's my big issue with a guy like Simon Oliveira. When you look for sort of the kill shots in MMA, just the ways to get finishes, he kind of covers all those bases. He has the long range attacks, like you had mentioned. I agree. I don't love his defense from the outside. It's almost like his hands are a little bit slow to react sometimes. He doesn't have bad footwork, I would say, but as the fight goes on, if he's defending takedowns, it can put a few question marks in Simon Oliveira's head. But here's the thing, I'll be honest, like, I was really excited for his fight against Gravely. Be it, Gravely is a really difficult fighter to make your UFC debut against, and I'm sure we're going to be saying that sentence quite a few times on this card, because there's a lot of rookies getting really difficult matchups on this card as a total, but for Oliveira... He just seemed to be behind a little bit against Gravely, and maybe that was a case of octagon jitters. You're fighting a guy who has a, had multiple fights in the UFC, so it, it might just be a case of getting that one under you, and they didn't go out there and express himself a little bit better in this matchup, but I was really, really impressed by Daniel Marcos' his last time out in Contender Series. I didn't really think he was going to be able to go out there and get the win, and I was impressed by just how well-rounded he seemed to be in that fight, be it with his takedowns, with his hand speed, with the power in his hands, too, and that was the nice thing to see out of Marcos. He was able to get the knockdown in that matchup, and I think that if we do see that aggressive version of him. It can be a really dangerous fight for Oliveira because like I said, Oliveira is a guy who can react to things and it can be very dangerous if you do make a big mistake. But the problem is if you're just letting yourself be a reactionary fighter a lot, you can get behind on the scorecards, and then we're just going to have to rely on some kind of Hail Mary finish as it goes on. Not that Oliveira can't do that. He does have those kind of skills. Like, you bring it up. He has guarantee and is filthy. You do not want to go for a lazy takedown and let this guy get a hold of your neck. He's going to sweep, get on top of you, threaten with the submission. Oliveira has a lot of the nice skills. I just wonder if he has enough filler on the in-between. And I mean, he does have a teammate on this card as well, Josiani Nunez. Both of them out of Astra Fight Team. I don't know if Josiani has, like, a great big Astra Fight team tattoo like Simon Oliveira does but when you leave that gym like can you leave that gym or are you Never. married to it now married to the game if you look at it for Oliveira the big thing out of it you'll see it on the graphic that we have all the finishes but 10 first round finishes four second round finishes one fifth round finish and he's got two decisions and his background is Luta Livre which is very similarly linked to jiu-jitsu in certain respects but fellow Peruvian just like Daniel Marcos you know him the Luta Livre man the leg sweeper it is Claudio Poyas. He is. is the man that's kind of pioneered that of late in the UFC. But out of that Gravely fight, again, all three judges had a 30-27 for Gravely. Again, he throws a lot of hooks from a tie stance, does Simon Oliveira. And he it, the weirdest part about his game is he does the lean back like a Luke Rockhold, but he's five foot four in the Bantamweight division. So really, height can be at a disadvantage. Reach can be at a disadvantage. He's actually at a reach advantage in this fight against Marcos. But if we flip it on its head for Marcos, as I said, three-year layoff from the regional scene to contender series and he also uprooted his life in that time he moved to the states last january left his family at home to train at american combat gym and you're probably thinking 
Where have I heard that name? Well, Summers. that's the Charles Rosa gym. So Marcos moved there, had Rosa in his corner in that fight. His hands look great. His boxing look great. He's rep by LCA Sports Management, which is a kind of a lesser known organization. They rep uh, Miranda Maverick, Jamie Pickett. You've got uh, Damon Blackshear. Like not a lot yeah. of big time marquee athletes, but from Marcos, what I like in his fights his striking defense is very, very advanced. Like, I really do like how he moves his head. He moves his body. He does a really good job of throwing his right hand a couple of different ways. I'll throw it as an uppercut. I'll throw it as a jab from the southpaw stance as a hook as well. I really do like the fact that he, he does have good moves to get up if he does get taken down. He doesn't have great takedown defense, does Marcos. But what he does is he does have kind of flat feet. And that kind of scares me in some of the yeah. exchanges, especially in this. The other good thing about Marcos, his leg kicks are thunderous, and he really did hurt uh, Lewis in his last fight that way. It's a weird situation, but I could see something happening in this fight that we don't often see, and it is an example that I can think of that is somewhat fresh. Remember how Pantoja tripped up Alex Perez, got on his back, and then choked him out? Oliveira's probably not thinking to himself, let's go for a lazy takedown, force him to give his back, and then go for the clinch that way. But uh, you kind of bring it up. When Marcos is getting up to his feet, he does like to plant a lot on the mat and explode. I could see Oliveira, if he is getting hit to some of those movements, to then take the back and get into a very dominant position that way. I think this is a very well-matched fight to open up the card, and that's what I hope for both these guys. It is a really difficult fight to predict because, it, again, they're both kind of entry level, if you will, and they do have bright futures. But if they can have one of those fight of the night fights in the opening fight of the card where... Joe Rogan, DC, and John Hannick are talking about it during the main card. Like, that's what you want for athletes of this level. So, we're going to have a look at the topology votes on this one. Oliveira is the slight favorite in the fight. Daniel Marcos making his UFC debut. Again, the weird thing with Marcos is he's undefeated as a pro. He's undefeated as an amateur. 6-0 as an amateur. So, he's on a 19-fight win streak. His level of competition on the regional scene, you add it all up. The wins and the losses is 68-31-2. And, and you might go, hey, that, that is, that sounds really good. But then you go through the fighters that he fought. He fought a guy named Cordova who at the time was 7-0 and Cordova's now 14-13 and Stop. and if you go down through everybody it wasn't the greatest level of competition he did beat Lewis over on Contender Series as an underdog I'm going to say the top all you votes Matt over under I'm going to say 70% Oliveira I think they'll be under I'll, I think they're close to 50 they're going to be under 751 total votes, 81% Marcos, 84% by decision for the 19% that I've Oliveira, 53% by decision. At Fight Night Picks over on Instagram, 55% of Oliveira. So Topology, 81% on Marcos, and at Fight Night Picks, 55% of Oliveira. Matt, that makes a pick really interesting. It does, and I thought I was going to be a little bit of a hipster going with Daniel Marcos in this one. Then we look at the Topology votes, and that's not the case whatsoever. But I do think the... His game is going to offer Oliveira a lot of trouble, I think, especially early on. Because if Oliveira is just waiting for things to happen and then him allowed to react off it, he could get hit with big shots. He could get taken down. Now, again, I don't think Marco's going for a lot of takedowns. It's probably the best game plan in a matchup like this. But we brought this up a lot in the Alon Nascimento fight last week. I think if Marcos can get on that in-between, and I know Nascimento looked really good, but still, if Marcos can get in on that in-between to make Oliveira feel uncomfortable, at least threaten a little bit with his pressure, I think that'll open up some of his striking. So, ever so slightly, I'm going to go with Dana. Marcos, but it's a very well-matched fight. And, and it could be due to the fact, I agree with you here, that Oliveira, I'm just so down on the performance that he had, making his UFC debut, and not really looking at the fact that he got near the top of the mountain with a lot of smaller promotions in Brazil and, and while ago too. in South America, but you go through the 5 on in and similar with both of these guys, for Oliveira, four years ago, three years ago, three years ago, a year ago with Alde, and then he loses to Gravely almost a year I ago. that was so long ago. Yeah. It feels like it wasn't long ago. A long, long time ago, but I do like the offense and the strike out of Marcos I think again with his stance and the way that he can move around on the feet I think he can pose a little bit of a challenge to Oliveira and I know both these guys could be billed as finishers but I think Marcos has just a little bit more in the way of winning maybe not the most fun decision so it's a fun me, fight though like I'm genuinely really excited for this fight to open up the whole entire card I know we say that on a lot of these but like I genuinely think this could be fight of the night I'm not saying it's going to be the most skilled fight on the card but both guys can get hurt both guys excel in most areas of mixed martial arts so I think for those reasons we're going to get a fun one both of us going with Peru's Daniel Marcos and his UFC debut let us know down below in the comment section who you have uh, a very evenly skilled fight to kick this card off and in the main event oh my goodness for the light heavyweight belt glover to share versus jamal hill you're gonna want to keep it locked in with fight night picks we always say let's get into it